Our goal in this video is to get a chat GBT prompt directly embedded in our studio, just like I have shown in this screenshot. The way we're going to do this is via a R package called Chatter. Step one in this process is getting a API key for the OpenAI services. This is what's going to allow us to communicate with ChatGBT. To do this, we're going to go to platform.openai.com. Go ahead and log in. I'm already logged in in my case, and I'm going to go to my settings via the cog icon. And it does cost money to interact with the OpenAI API. So under billing, you're going to want to make sure you have this set up so you have some available credits on your account. Then you want to go to the section API keys. You'll see the option to create a new secret key. I'll name mine RStudio since that's where I plan on using it. And I'll just put it in my default project, create the key. And this is the only time that they're going to show you this key. So make sure you copy it. And I'm just going to open up a text edit window and paste it there. I'm going to need this in a moment. And an API key is just like a password. So you want to keep it secret. In my case, obviously, I'm compromising it by showing it in this video. But this is just for the purposes of this demo. And I will be deleting this key after I finish recording the video. With our key created, we're done at the OpenAI site. So going back to the notes, there are a few commands we're going to run in our studio to get everything set up. So I'm going to copy these commands and let's bring them into our studio and walk through them one by one. Step one is we're going to install the chatter package. So I'm just going to run that line. And then using the library function, we'll go ahead and load it. From our packages on the right, we can see that it is installed and loaded. And the first function we're going to utilize from this package is chatter use, where we're going to indicate which AI model we want to use. For this demo, I'm going to use GPT-4. But if you check out the link that I included with the code, you can see other models that are available. So let's run that line. In the console, we see some basic output just indicating that that was successful. So the next step is we need to set our open API key. We're going to do this using the system.set environment function. And we want to paste in the key we acquired in the first step. So going back to my text edit, I'm going to copy my key, paste that in, and run that line. And then the final function, chatter app, is what's going to actually start up the application. We're giving it the parameter as job set to true. This is going to make it so it runs as a background task. Uh, if we didn't do this, it would just uh, tie up our current console. We wouldn't be able to issue other R commands. And obviously, we want to continue with our work as we're using this chat application. So we're just going to make it run in the background with this parameter. So I'm going to run that line. And excellent. There's our chat window. Let's go ahead and try it out. And perfect, there is our response. So now that we've got Chatter running, let's talk about how we can make it so that it always runs anytime you open up our studio. To accomplish this, we're going to take our initialization code and put it in a file called our profile. This is a special file that gets run anytime we open up R or our studio. And so it's a good place to put initialization code. To locate and edit this file, if we go back to the notes and scroll down, we're going to take advantage of a package called use this to very quickly locate the file. And that way, regardless of what operating system you're on, we don't have to go hunting for this file. So let's uh, first install the package use this in case we don't already have it installed. So I'm going to run this in my console. And then going back to the notes, the command we're going to run is use this, edit our profile. And you can see that opened up my .r profile file, which is currently blank. You might have some existing code in here. And I also get some output telling me where this file is actually located. So now that our profile is open, let's add the necessary code to it. Once again, we'll go back to the notes. And what I have is some code that looks very similar to when we manually started Chatter, but I did wrap it in a set hook function that's going to make sure that our studio is initialized. And there's also a brief two second pause that's going to occur before we try to load Chatter. Uh, without this additional code, uh, there would be an error produced when you first load our studio because essentially it's going to try to initialize the Chatter application before our studio is completely initialized itself. So we want to avoid that in this context. So let's copy this reworked version, paste it into our profile. Once again, we need to put in our API key. So I'll just grab that from my manual example. Save my changes. I'll go ahead and get rid of this temporary file since we won't need to manually invoke Chatter anymore. And let's test it out. I'm going to quit our studio. Because I currently have Chatter running in the background, it is going to ask me just to terminate that job before our studio quits. So we'll go ahead and OK that. I don't need to save the changes to my workspace image, so I'm going to say don't save. And then let's reload our studio. And perfect, we could see the background job was started up with Chatter. And once again, we have access to the ChatGBT 
uh, interface here in our viewer pane.